and guess which room we're in. If we take a look at the map, yes, we're back in this giant northern room here. So, <laughs> I told you we'd be coming back here quite a bit, and this is only the first of many times. So we can clear these things off if we want, there's no real need to. Might as well, and you can see we can also step on this switch, which will raise the gate, kind of creating a shortcut back for us, so we don't have to bother with any of that stupid, <laughs> annoying stuff again. I think, yeah, there's another jelly blob in the corner. I kind of want to see how many of those I have now. Uh, up to ten. Cool, we're in the double digits. <laughs> okay, now we got this part here. Obviously a big, uh, plane of sink sand here. We can take a look at our map, and this one we kind of have to play by ear, because we can't put beacons down. So it looks like we just head a little bit to the right, and that'll put us on the platform here and just run straight forward. I usually don't bother with those, uh, guys. If we move fast enough, we can avoid most of their stuff. I guess we can- I, we've got plenty of bombs, so... There we go, might as well take care of it. And we got a dust pile over here, with a little spider thing inside of it. Another jelly blob, I want it. <laughs> I want all the jelly blobs. Okay, so we got this little crawly passage here. Uh, it's pretty simple, we're gonna be coming on a little... I hate not facing straight forward, there we go. So let's just keep going, and you can see there's a treasure right in front of us, so just ignore all the side paths. And kind of a little, uh, I don't know, like a family portrait or something of these little robot guys, it's kinda cute. And, of course, watch out for those, so as soon as we step up... Oh, I thought they would both fall. Okay, there we go. Then we can open this chest. I don't remember if this one's important or not. I don't think so. Okay, yeah, it's just another rare treasure, but, you know, you're here, you might as well get it. Cool. And I guess we can check the dust piles. They're probably just gonna have hearts and enemies. Oh, well, there's an amber relic, so I guess it was kinda worth it. Alright, so we're gonna have to head out back the way we've came. Nothing too much more here. Yeah, fine, we'll just go kind of crooked. <laughs> I hate that. I can never straighten myself out. I always kind of go to the side. I don't know why that is. Okay, so let's continue along our path. We can uh, take a look here. And this one's actually a little bit more complicated. You can see we're gonna have to take a right angle turn there. So once we kind of line ourselves up, you can see this guy's going to show up, which gives us a bit of a hint at where the platforms actually are. So that kind of helps out a little bit, at least. Go ahead and dodge this guy. And again, I guess bombs work. Okay, so from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we got a Gus Bellas here. Unfortunately, the slime guy gets in the way. Oh, there we go. And go ahead and take him out as well. Alright, so now I've got a slightly more complicated crawly path here, but if we take a look, uh, if we zoom in, we can kind of see the general direction that we need to go. It's really not that complicated, and if you go the wrong way, you just see that telling you to stop, pretty much. So, you know, it's really easy to find your way through. Uh, no need to worry about getting lost. Just head straight forward, then turn to the right. Go left here, go right here. Left, I believe. Oh, no, don't stop. Get to turn around. Okay. See, I mean, it's it's not like it's hard to find your way through here if you don't know it. Okay, now this room. This one can be a bit of a pain. You can see there's a lot of sand everywhere. What they pretty much want you to do is use the gust bellows. You can see we can kind of blow this away bit by bit to reveal the path in front of us. And if we go the wrong way, spikes. Don't want that. That'll hurt. It actually killed the enemy for me, which is kind of cool. So since I pretty much already know the way through, we're going to skip blowing away most of this. Uh, it's a pretty simple little maze. There's not too much to have to worry about. Swing! There we go. <laughs> Wasn't doing anything. Alright, so we can make our way up here. We're going to have to make kind of a left turn. Uh, See, I can't remember exactly. I'm just way too lazy to blow all this stuff away. I mean, it takes forever. It really does. So I, I thought we could go through right there. Maybe it's... I don't know, I must... Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna have to give in. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. You can go around the corner here. Alright, sweet. So now I know my way. And this is pretty much the exit right here, but we're gonna have to do a few things first. Uh, for one, yeah, you can see this door is blocked off, so we're gonna have to fix that. Uh, there's also actually a chest to pick up. Why did that blow towards me? That's so weird. Yeah, you can see they hop on you. They don't really do anything. You just gotta shake them off. Alright, so we go here. We're gonna hit a wall right there. Oh. Oh, <laughs> there's a thing on me. Huh? <laughs> I didn't even see that. All right, yeah, let's just get that guy away. Once we hit this, we can kind of round the corner. Oop. 
again. <laughs> Get away from me thing. And we can go through here, and the chest is actually going to be right in this corner, so let's go ahead and, yep, there it is. See, it's really just such a pain to have to blow all that sand away. I just can't be bothered, especially when I kind of already know which way to go. Okay, so to find the switch, uh, I think it's actually in this corner here. Yep, there it is. So I guess my intuition served me alright after all. Dude, get away. Hate these things. <laughs> like, pretty much everywhere I see them, they're just always in the way. Alright, so let's step on the switch, and that'll release the door lock here. Make our way back through here. Kind of a tight fit, but we can make it up the stairs, and through we go. So yeah, obviously your first time through, you're going to want to blow all that sand away so you're not like searching around forever, but thankfully I've uh, this isn't my first rodeo, so I kind of know my way around a little bit already. So we got this minecart here with some ore in it. There's also a time shift stone trapped inside. Let's go ahead and check this one. I, don't know. I thought that might have been the one with the red ruby, but... And you can see there's a switch over here, but it's already down. Uh, this switch is actually just to move the cart back over here in case you uh, lost it and you need to find it again. So we can uh, hit the time shift stone with a stab there. I guess you could also use the slingshot, but why waste the ammo? And it's going to get along its merry way. We've just got to follow it along the platforms it creates. And we can kind of check this way out. This is actually pretty much the end of the dungeon, but we can't really do anything with it right now. So let's just continue on with our little uh, minecart here. You can see there's an enemy going to be activated. It's another one of those, uh, I think they're called Centrobes. It's another one of those things. So let's get his attention. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I think the minecart actually blocked the missile. That's kind of funny. Ah, and I was early. Yeah, see, these things can be a little annoying. Come on, man. There we go. It's not that tough. It's a pretty slow missile. There we go. <laughs> Didn't mean to go diagonal there. Alright, one more missile. There we go. Now, once he goes down, kind of get to the left. No, I think, uh, I think the red rupee might have actually hit the top of that. Oh, there's one over here. Cool. Uh, it might have hit the top of that and kind of fell back off, but uh, if you stand kind of to the left of it, that's usually where it shoots off one of the red rupees, so. Thankfully, we actually managed to catch one there, so that's good. Uh, that's kind of a wider platform than the one we were on before, so that works. Now, along the way here, we're going to activate these uh, BMOs here. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do to take them out since they're just kind of on their own. There's no way to walk up to them, which you have to do in this game. So we're going to use the minecart kind of as cover here. And now this one we can take out since it's along the way. You know, and we're going to have to, in fact. The minecart would get stuck on it otherwise. So let's get the blue ruby it dropped. Then we got two we're going to have to shield ourselves from. It's pretty easy to stay behind the minecart. You don't really have to worry about it too much. They can just kind of take a leisurely stroll alongside it here. It can be it can be really easy to actually get nervous about it, though, especially if, like, they catch a glimpse of you and start shooting. It's like if you step out from behind the minecart at all, you're dead, you know? But uh, not too bad. We can pull the switch here, and this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, to pull the minecart over to that side. So it kind of speeds up the expedition a bit. And if we want, we can open this thing up. And you might not know off the top of your head exactly where we are, but I will in fact tell you, if we take a look at the map, you can see there's the south door. See, there's the little junction. So this is just right back where we were before again. So we can access that bird statue if we want. However, the real way to go is going to be over here to the side. You can see we got another giant dust pile there, so you can pretty much guess what we're going to have to do with it. And there's a ladder there, but if we look up, uh, it's blocked off by another one of those blocks. So that's something we'll have to open up later. So let's get this thing going. Yet another minecart with the time shift stone inside. So you know what to do. And let's check what's in these barrels. There we go. I hate not being at full health. It just bugs me, you know? So along the way here, it turns out this little platform is actually our goal, but we're going to have to go kind of back and forth once before we can uh, reach it the way we need to. And you can see, first things first, let's take care of the BMOs that's going to pop up. So let's ready our sword. 
go. And you can see the door is blocked off, and there's nothing really we can do about that from here. So what we're going to have to do is wait until the minecart reaches this section over here, uh, which will activate this little pinwheel thing, if we go ahead and just get started on it. Any day now, huh? And there it goes. So you can see that's what's going to open the door back on the other platform. Unfortunately, our platforms are disappearing behind us faster than we can get back there, so we're going to have to wait. Fortunately, we can speed that up with the switch here. However, it's a little more annoying to get the cart going again. Got to stab it once in order to turn it off. And actually, let's go ahead and check these. Because I know there's one dust pile that has a red rupee in it. That one was alright. It had ten, so I'll take it. And then we're going to have to activate the cart again in order to get it going the opposite way. When you're just waiting on them, it takes forever. Alright, from here we can just hop. And make our way through the door. Okay, so we've got yet another big open room. I tell you, this place is full of them. Just look at all those platforms. Man, it looks a little complicated, but it won't be too bad. So obviously deactivate a conveyor belt here. And watch out for the steam that comes across. It'll just knock you right into the pit. Don't want that. There we go. I think we can just get this guy to jump off. Yeah, we can get close enough that he'll just jump off. There we go. <laughs> So you could use the gust bellows there, but I prefer to just let them leap to their own deaths, you know? So obviously we need to watch out for the steam, it'll knock you right off into the pit, so it's pretty easy to avoid as long as you're just somewhat careful in watching it. Yeah, so there's the keys to act actually electrifying itself before charging. So again, just no iron shield, you'll be fine there. And we've of course got some more of these uh, little bomb baskets we have to do. And obviously our goal is that big dust pile over there on the side. So let's do some more bellows-ing. Nope. Get off here. And once again we find our old friend the Time Shift Stone. So let's do this. And that of course is going to set into motion all the contraptions here. And of course activate those two things. And yeah, again, like I said before, when they're in groups of two, make sure you get one at a time. But we'll deal with that when we get there. Got a Beemos here. That way it's looking away. The only tricky thing about that is really getting the stab to work reliably. Because uh, if you get, like, your sword knocked back, it can, like, shoot pretty much straight away and hit you there. So uh, it'd actually be pretty easy to get kind of a cheap shot. Uh, we've got a kind of a way to go down there, but we're going to ignore that for the time being. Because uh, it turns out there's not really a lot we can do down there. And we're going to pull the switch that's right in front of us, bring this platform over. I, I hate these things. <laughs> you, you can't get them half the time. Alright, there we go. Alright, so once we go along this way, we got another centrobe to deal with, so let's go ahead and get on this guy. This is also a pretty good one for collecting rupees if he's close enough. Oh, he actually didn't drop a red one and he was too far away. But if you can get him kind of close enough, all the rupees will just kind of hit up against the wall here. So that can make it easier to collect them. It's, uh, <laughs> they're kind of a shot off the backboard, I guess. Oh, the bomb is frozen in midair. That's kind of neat. Alright, so let's go ahead and start talking about this. Uh, we can look on the wall. You can see there's a different number of symbols on each one. Uh, essentially kind of on the right, on the left, and in the middle. And if we look across, we can see there's also uh, three different little bomb things. So uh, that's going to correspond in some way to a puzzle solution here. Uh, let's go ahead and get this platform across first. Here we are. Use this to hop back across. Really? <laughs> he just walked off. He didn't even jump. Oh, that was weird. Now, thankfully, you don't lose health falling into that, which is uh, more forgiving than kind of the older Zelda games. You would always lose a heart whenever you fell into a pit. 
Okay, so we can make our way across here, and this is pretty much just setting up a somewhat big puzzle, uh, if you couldn't guess. So, um, let's go ahead. We can also move this out of the way. That'll kind of give us access uh, without having to worry about these stupid little wind vane platforms. So let's get going here. We gotta push it on the left side this time. See, it's kind of random which way you gotta go. Uh, let's go ahead and stop it here and we'll get some bombs into this first one. We might be able to get the second one while we're here. Okay, yeah, cool, we did. So you can see behind each one of these, we're gonna reveal one of these crystal switches. And uh, this is what's, of course, gonna correspond on the other side. You can see we need to hit them in the order portrayed on the wall. One on the right, two on the left, three in the center. Of course, it's a little bit mirrored here. So uh, this one is the switch we hit first. Let's go ahead and get that. And let's also uh, make our way towards the end here, because this side is the one we're going to have to get next. Whoa, <laughs> I cannot see where I'm standing. Okay, that had me a little nervous. Alright, so we get the slingshot ready. We're gonna have to hit this one in front of us. Okay, hop back on here. And then obviously the one in the middle last. So, pretty simple puzzle. I mean, it should be fairly obvious to really anyone who's played a Zelda game before, so no big deal there. Alright, now I get to use this platform once again in order to make our way back over. This way, there we go. I mean, I appreciate wanting to make us use the gust bellows, but <laughs> come on, that, that's a little ridiculous. It, it gets too annoying. I wish they would just be automatic or something. So yeah, more bombs for us. Might as well pick those up. And of course, go into the room unlocked. Now, this is where the two, uh, these guys are the Armos. They're basically, uh, you know, this, their iteration in this game. So we got two of these. Again, like I said before, make sure you get one at a time so we can, nah, well, I've already screwed that up. I might as well just go ahead and get one. All right, and then when you get the front one, they'll start taking these large leaps at you, and this is where it can kind of be a pain, uh, especially if they reset like that. Thankfully, I managed to catch it though. So we gotta, we gotta stab the inside. That can be a little rough. I was banking on opening. It. Oh man! <laughs> wow, that other guy was right there. Yeah, that's what I mean by sometimes it can be a pain to get more than one at once. Let's see if I can. There we go. I knew it was possible to get both crystals. Like, I've done it before. But thankfully, we got it on the last one. So if you can manage that, it does make them a little bit easier. But still, I think they're probably one of the more annoying enemies in the game, if you ask me. Alright, and of course, there's the Ancient Circuit. Gonna be the boss key for this dungeon. And that'll open up another passage on the other side. So this is where we're gonna use that ladder we uh, made available in order to get back across. Gotta be most along the way, but that's no big deal. Okay, see, and that ladder right there was actually the one that I skipped before, and that's why, because everything over here was kind of blocked off. Alright, now this one can be a bit of a pain. We're gonna have to run against the conveyor belt, but you don't want to run into the steam, obviously, because that'll just knock you off. So you kind of have to time out your sprinting a little bit, which is kind of hard to do when you've got this conveyor belt going so fast against you. But once you make it past the first one, you can pretty much just continue straight ahead and you'll make it past the second. And uh, yeah, there's nothing on the other side, so through the door is the only way forward. Alright, and one more time, you can guess which room we're in. Yes, it's that big giant northern room again. And we're going to take a little detour here and go up this ladder. There's really no reason to unless you uh, just want the treasure at the end, which of course I do. So I'm going to take the time to go all the way up here. I swear there's one of these that has a red rupee in it. I probably skipped it already. Alright, and we get the small chest at the end, which if you haven't guessed by now, it's going to have yet another red rupee for us. So you can see our wallet's stacking up pretty nicely here. Got another Thunder Keys to deal with. Nope. Nope. <laughs> well, okay, fine then, I guess. And we can pull this block away if we want to make yet another shortcut. You don't really need it at this point, but well, we might as well for completion's sake, I guess. Okay, so all the way back here. 
let's go ahead and hop off onto this platform. We're just about done with this place, actually. Uh, we got the boss key, and we're just about ready uh, to make our way to the boss door right there. You can see there's uh, the mine cart that's going to kind of activate all this. So we're getting pretty close to the end. And, of course, uh, there being a bird statue there also uh, kind of helps out with that. Oh, no, that was just a great one. I got my hopes up for a minute. So this uh, mine cart's already uncovered. We can just stab it there. Okay, and now this one looks like it's going to be a giant pain, kind of what these uh, wind platforms usually signify, but it turns out it's not too bad. All you have to do is just kind of keep up with it. Uh, thankfully, the steam vents kind of disappear whenever they get... Uh, unfortunately, you, you have to wait on the mine cart in order to get going again. Oh, oh, actually, I think... Yeah, I did hit the end. All right, cool. So we can get the mine cart over here, and eventually that's going to get us to our objective. You can see that right there is the boss door. So we finally made it through this place. And uh, we can also check, I'm fairly certain we got all the treasure. And yep, sure did. Cool. Now I'm going to check these piles over here. I'll ignore that thing if I can. Okay, well, no, that was the last hope. So I guess I, uh, I either am dreaming about the red rupee or I skipped it. Oh well. And now, th I always found this kind of funny, you know, Fi really hasn't bugged us this entire dungeon. I think she's feeling a little neglected, so she just chooses to pop out here and say, look at this. There's a great door here, it's locked, and it's only logical something of great importance is behind it. Like, really? I mean, we've seen a boss door twice now, I think we know. I'm pretty sure she was just feeling kind of ignored, so. Alright, so we just pretty much have to turn this one... Like that. There we go. Not too bad. And I think it's also really cool how it kind of goes just outside the time shift stone's reach. It's like the very ends of the door are all old and decrepit again. Well, that seems rather fitting. This is the Thousand Year Arachnid Molder Rock. So obviously its two targets are going to be the uh, giant glowing eyes. Anytime one of them go glows red, it's about to attack you with that. So make sure to backflip out of the way. Now we pretty much just have to get the right angle here whenever it's open. I like to go for this back one first because it's the smaller one. Uh, if you're going for the larger one first, it can be really easy to miss whenever this claw attacks and it attacks really quickly. So you don't want to be caught off guard. Alright, so there's one down already. We're making good progress. We can start on the larger claw. So you kind of have more time to dodge that one. He charges that one up a bit more. You also have to watch out once you destroy one of the claws, he'll start trying to attack you with his tail. So just watch for when the camera zooms out and when he kind of makes a noise. It's pretty easy still. He's rather slow. Ooh, that was actually kind of close. <laughs> And the music for this one's kind of cool, too. It feels rather epic, uh, even though this... Uh, I mean, it's, it's a giant scorpion, I guess, but still, you know, it's... Oh, man, I almost got caught. Uh, if you do get caught by that, he'll pretty much just kind of hold on to you and crush you, and I believe you do have to actually break free of it. Um, however, I'm pretty sure it usually deals, like, two hearts worth of damage, so... He can actually get you a little bit if you're not careful. Then once he gets into this part, he's going to burrow into the ground. This is where we're, of course, going to use the dungeon item. If you were wondering how they were going to integrate the uh, Gust Bellows into a fight, there you go. Uh, you you kind of have to watch out for when he charges you, because he's very quick about it. So uh, make sure that you're uh, on the evasion as soon as you can. There we go. And pretty much from here on out, we just got to stab the central eye. And he's going to periodically kind of send out these little ones to annoy us. I guess it might not be a bad idea to take some of them out so they're not being too annoying. Alright, so now we have to look for where the bulges kind of are. So he's sending out more, so we kind of have to find him here in all the sand. And we eventually just kind of keep blowing on him long enough, he'll pop out again. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so that's what I mean, like, he's actually pretty quick with that charge attack. 
Alright, so he's underground again. Dude, I see you. Stop trying to hide. There he goes. Like, it's not gonna work. And I hate that he always gets, like, just out of your reach. But thankfully, you can usually counter just after that charge, and there we go. There we go. Not a bad fight, actually. I don't know. I guess all the sand kind of drained out from underneath here. I don't really know how it didn't do that from the beginning, but oh well. <laughs> so we pick up our heart container. That guy can actually give you a little bit of trouble if you're uh, just not really paying attention or you're kind of reckless about it. Um, because he can take off like two hearts per hit, which can uh, be kind of tough. And on hero mode, that does, uh, I think, all damage is doubled, so... That might be a little bit of a uh, need to uh, worry there, but, you know, still, it's not too bad if you're just paying somewhat close attention. Alright, so now we got this room here, which is pretty cool, actually. Um, it's it's entirely unnecessary, but I love it. <laughs> you see, you got these kind of giant robot statues. We'll get a better look at them in a little bit. Um, but for now, we need to kind of just get the beetle up here to hit this time shift stone. And there's no music here, either. I kind of like it that way. That's cool, we got these giant golden robot statues saluting us. <laughs> it's pretty neat, if you ask me. Alright, so let's hop in the minecart. We kind of get like a ride of heroes here. We just make our way along the path, and these guys salute us along the way. So, <laughs> that's pretty neat, actually. So, like, this room is entirely unnecessary, but you would kind of lose a lot of atmosphere without it, you know? Like, it actually works pretty well. Take a good look at these guys here. Nice. <laughs> So, yep, yeah, nothing else to do, just ride the minecart across and out we go. And I always like this part right here. We got the goddess's heart, but there's no time to admire it. <laughs> More cool scenes going on.
Man, I tell you what, that's always been one of my favorite scenes, you know? Uh, the whole battle between Gary, him, and Impa, and him, like, finally shattering her shield, you know, giving way and all that. Uh, I've always thought that was really well done, actually, and it's a pretty exciting affair. However, it's giving me the opportunity here, so I believe this will be a good time to save and quit. We finished up the dungeon, met with Zelda again. She went inside that kind of spinning gear-like thing. I guess we'll learn more about that later. But for now, we are done. So next time, we will uh, see what comes next. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.